Welcome to Usability and Human Factors Electronic Health Records and Usability. This is Lecture B. We will continue our discussion on electronic health records, EHRs, and usability. In this lecture, we will focus on usability concepts. By the end of this lecture, students will be able to 1 identify a set of well-established principles of usability and design and describe their applications to EHRs. Two, identify and explain usability methods for enhancing efficiency of use and minimizing likelihood of user error. We will use the 14 general design principles identified by the National Center for Cognitive Informatics and Decision Making in Healthcare as the framework for this lecture. As described in an earlier lecture, this list gives 14 general design principles identified by the Center As described in an earlier lecture, this list gives 14 general design principles identified by the National Center for Cognitive Informatics and Decision Making in Healthcare and based on Nielsen's original 10 principles. We will use these throughout this lecture. Users should not have to wonder whether different words, situations, or actions mean the same thing. Standards and conventions in product design should be followed. One important aspect involves the consistent display of information. This requires that a system dependably use standard formats, fonts, line spacing, letter spacing, and page lengths when displaying relevant information. The same information should appear in fixed places across all screens. This is a bad example of position related to consistency. There are two screens, one above the other. The submit button is displayed in different places on different screens within the same task. The system should also use consistent language. Some terminology and languages are widely used in the clinical settings or pre-existing clinical applications. Make sure they do not have different meanings in the EHR. Otherwise, users may have incorrect understanding of displayed information and act erroneously. In addition to consistent display of information, another important point is to offer consistent user system interactions. For example, the data input, method, and process, as well as corresponding assistant functionalities e.g. filtering, sorting, and alerting, etc., should be standardized and remain consistent. That uniformity will potentially accelerate operation processes as the user repeatedly interacts with the system. Figure 2 shows an example that goes against this rule. Names and demographic data must be displayed consistently across screens. Visibility of system status indicates that users should be continuously aware of what the system is doing or needing through feedback and display of information. Examples in electronic health records include visibility answers users' questions as they interact with system interface like what is the current state of the system? What can be done in the current state? Where can users go next? And what changes have been made after an action with the system? Displaying loading, searching, or progress indicators as the information loading on the screen to inform the system state. In this good example, an image has been shown as loading information. Differentiate clickable elements from normal text to inform users of what can do and where to go. In this bad example, there is no indication of what elements on the page are clickable or not clickable. 
The image of the system perceived by users should match the model the users have about the system. Place items and display information consistently. The items in the system should be placed according to existing standards and guidance in the real world as well as to facilitate users' performance. For example, the primary menu should be placed in the left. This is a bad example because the system uses P as the abbreviation of PM, which makes it difficult to understand. The EHR should only present information that is needed by users. Displaying too much irrelevant information may distract users and therefore diminish the relative visibility of important information. In this bad example, the user is looking for prescription information regarding a patient. This page provides this information, but also presents clinical reminders of this patient. Even though the clinical reminders are important, they have nothing to do with the user's original task. Including this information in the prescription list may confuse the user and slow down further actions. We can have different information formats for different purposes. In this example, more detail is provided for one task and less detail for another task. Users should not be required to memorize or recall out of their heads a great deal of information to carry out tasks. Memory load reduces users' capacity to perform the main task. Ways to reduce a user's memory load include recognition rather than recall, e.g. menu versus commands, externalizing information through visualization, hierarchical structure, default values, concrete examples, DD, MM, YY, e.g. 10, 20, 99, generic rules and actions, e.g drag objects. This example illustrates the use of checklists in an EHR. The user traverses the predefined terms and selects the proper ones, which is simpler than trying to recall everything. A very closely related concept to minimizing memory load is that of minimizing cognitive load. So we'll include it in the list and number it 5A. Cognitive resources, which include perception, attention, and memory, are limited. If a user is forced to use them in paying attention to the interface, he or she has fewer resources for the main diagnosis and treatment tasks. Some means of reducing cognitive load are to present relevant information together on the same screen, as switching screens uses short-term memory Using methods that require recognition, such as making the user choose items from a list rather than recall, such as typing in commands, reduce cognitive load imposed by the system. A very closely related concept to minimizing memory load is that of minimizing cognitive load, so we'll include it in the list and number it 5A. Cognitive resources, which include perception, attention, and memory, are limited. If a user is forced to use them in paying attention to the interface, he or she has fewer resources for the main diagnosis and treatment tasks. Some means of reducing cognitive load are to present relevant information together on the same screen, as switching screens uses short-term memory. Using methods that require recognition, such as making the user choose items from a list rather than recall, such as typing in commands, reduce cognitive load imposed by the system. Organizing information by meaningful relationships, placing related values together also assists in minimizing cognitive load. Transparency is important. After initial training, the user should not have to wonder what different parts of the system do, what the likely result of an action will be, or how to do various tasks. The system should provide cues to assist operation. Another issue is that presentation of medical data in ways that allow the user to perceive patterns through perception 
not computation, is optimal. On the left is a table showing the patient's creatinine values and renal function over several years. On the right, the same values are graphed, allowing one to see patterns at a glance. Obtaining values such as these requires the user to do calculations to find the time elapsed since the measurement. This relieves the user of calculation with approximate, useful values. The user can mouse over to get exact dates if required. Users should be given prompt and informative feedback about their actions. Users should be informed of the system status that results from their actions. The system status includes the user's location within the system, the progress towards completion, or the time needed for a task to be completed, etc. Presenting status information to users facilitates their next actions and should improve operating efficiency. This figure shows an example of providing feedback on the user's location by breadcrumb navigation, shown in the red box. It presents the user with the information needed to understand where they are in the system and how to perform further actions. The appropriate use of alerts can greatly reduce the potential of errors. These alerts should have following features. Be expressed in plain language, precisely indicate the problem, and constructively suggest a solution. This figure shows a good example of an alert, which has a succinct reason for the alert, as well as a list of actions for responding to the alert. In this good feedback example, the user who orders warfarin for a patient who is already taking aspirin is given an alert warning about the warfarin-aspirin interaction. The rationale for the alert and action choices are also listed. Efficient interactions minimize the number of steps required to do a specific task and allows shortcuts for experienced users. Examples of specific techniques are a. Making sure to use good default values typical of most situations and b. Striking a balance between automated functions and allowing the user to edit or change. Other considerations are to prevent excessive switching between keyboard and mouse to minimize visual search, such as by organizing material in a logical manner and consistent locations, and to minimize the distance the cursor must travel repeatedly. Fitt's law is a discovery of human movement that the time taken to hit a target is proportional to its distance and inversely proportional to its size. Flexible functions. Systems designs should support the ability to customize certain functions based on the differing needs of specific users. For example, the system should provide a selection of units during the prescribing process to increase flexibility and efficiency. If the unit is fixed, the user is limited in how far they can modify the dose according to the drug selected or the patient's needs. The user would also have a problem in entering the amount and thus affect the efficiency of user performance. Shortcuts for frequently used operations. The system should offer users the direct access to high priority tasks on the home page to increase efficiency. For example, a single click navigation to access growth chart display would be helpful in pediatrics to evaluate the developmental changes. Other assistive functions should be provided to facilitate user performance. For example, accurate conversion from pounds to kilograms can increase efficiency in calculating the weight and future medication prescribing process. Search functions. Give users simple or advanced search functions according to the context. First, simple searches should be provided on the home page with an input box. Advanced search should be shown as a link on the home page with search templates and search tips provided, unless advanced searches are the norm on the page. 
This is an example of an efficiently arranged interface. Note the clear separations of sections, graphical display of data as sparklines at the right, which show trends, clear type at appropriate density, bold and grayed out sections of text for important and less important data, and use of color. Scientific studies show that users will click through practically anything if they see it often enough. This is also true for alerts and error messages, even very important ones. The phenomena of clicking OK or dismiss without reading the text is called alert fatigue. Messages should be informative to the user and in a human readable format. The user should be able to understand the nature of error, learn from the message, and recover a specific error. Examples have been shown in other lectures in this component. Ideally, we would prevent errors from happening in the first place, so systems should be designed to try to minimize the possibility of errors. According to Norman, there are two categories of errors, slips, mistakes. Slips result from automatic behavior when subconscious actions intended to satisfy a goal are waylaid. Mistakes result from conscious deliberation, the choice of inappropriate goals, poor decisions. Most everyday errors are slips. It is always better to design interfaces that prevent errors from happening in the first place. Promote data quality to reduce the occurrence of errors. Anticipate typical user errors. Always provide sufficient instructional information to support data quality and ensure such information is easily visible. For example, normal or recommended range of data should be displayed in default where appropriate or can be easily accessed by users. System must remain stable. Do not permit automatic changes to measurement systems, e.g. pounds versus kilograms, or replacement of critical threshold following system-wide crash. Any important changes and updates must be notified to users before they act to mitigate the potential errors from unexpected actions. Eliminate error-prone conditions is also important. For example, invalid or inappropriate selection items or entries can be misleading and advance risks of misselection and misinterpretation. This example is bad because the input box is not wide enough to see the entered data. Clear closure means that each task has a well-defined beginning and end. Users should be unambiguously notified that a task is completed. Specifically, each interactive transaction needs to a beginning, middle, and end to accomplish the seven stages of actions proposed by Norman. The transparent feedback to the user indicates when a goal has been achieved and current stacks of goals can be released. Reversible actions means that users should be allowed to recover from errors. The reversible actions can be at different levels, such as a single action, a subtask, or a complete task and in multiple steps. Reversible actions also encourage exploratory learning and prevent serious errors. Effective use of language means using language that is precise but familiar to users and does not use computing terms to users unfamiliar with them. Uppercase should not be used except in rare contexts. Abbreviations should be handled cautiously. The Joint Commission of the Accreditation of Hospital Organizations, JCAHO, has forbidden use of certain abbreviations which can cause errors. It is also important to indicate when not all the information is visible on the screen, such as by using ellipses, more links, and so on. Controlled vocabularies are important for standardizing, making interfaces consistent, and for decision support. 
coordinating data interchange between systems, administration, and reporting, and identifying clinical relationships. The presence of a controlled vocabulary can sustainably facilitate many aspects of successful implementation and is an area of research. The presence of a controlled vocabulary can substantially facilitate many aspects of successful implementation and is an area of research. We've gone through most of the guidelines from the National Center for Cognitive Informatics and Decision Making in Healthcare. So let's look at a few other general guidelines and how they relate to healthcare examples. Effective information presentation involves appropriate density, visual search, organization, and summarization. An example of information presentation, lists are highlighted according to speciality or filtered. Color must be used to convey meaning following conventions common in the U.S. Consistency of colors assigned to meanings must also be part of design. Colors for decoration should be limited to logos and similar branding aspects of design. It is important to note that many people are colorblind and confuse red and green and blue and yellow, so secondary methods for showing the same meaning should be used. For example, text highlighted in color can also be underlined for emphasis. Hatch marks or other fill techniques can be used to show differences between regions. One practice is to print interfaces in grayscale to ensure that areas distinguished by color are intelligible without it. Here we have the color meanings in the United States. Color meaning can vary between different cultures so be aware of this if dealing with patient populations who may be from other places. Red is used for alerting users to abnormal values, danger, emergencies, and so on. Yellow is used to call attention to information as it is one of the most eye-catching colors. It can also mean intermediate levels of danger or concern. Between red and green, Green generally indicates safety, permission to go ahead, normal, a good range, and so on. Readability ensures that users can scan interfaces quickly with good comprehension, an important factor for clinicians under time pressure. Systems must respect user settings for font size or color to accommodate those in visual impairments. Sans serif fonts are most readable on computer screens. Black on white is generally most readable. Contrast and fading should be used appropriately. Preserving context is important in healthcare where interruptions are frequent. Context is also important in preventing errors since the significance of information depends on context. Systems should provide direct responsiveness as much as possible so that users can tell what is happening at any point. Visibility of system status and whether their task is progressing normally. Some older systems have the user set modes, i.e. different modes for data entry versus viewing. This is to be avoided as it can lead to errors and user frustration when the user may be unable to keep track of which mode is active. This is an example of a dashboard screen, including all elements on the same page, provides context for understanding how aspects of the patient's condition relate to one another. The arrows and highlights show clinically related data. In 2011, the Health Information Management System Society, HIMSS pronounced HIMS, proposed a five-stage model to describe organizational maturity with respect to usability. This starts with an unrecognized stage at which awareness of usability and its impact is non-existent. Preliminary integration includes sporadic inclusion of usability with very limited resources. 
The implemented stage is characterized by a recognition of the value of usability with small teams doing it. The integrated stage occurs when all usability benchmarks have been implemented, including having a dedicated user experience team. Finally, the strategic stage of usability exists when its business benefits are well understood. Usability is mandated and staff and budget are included. The results of usability study are included throughout the organization. This slide shows the phases of usability in an organization and how they relate to the users, management, processes, resources, and education. In the unrecognized phase, none of these has any focus on usability. As an organization enters the preliminary phase, the focus on users and education has increased, and there is little attention to the other three aspects. In the implemented phase, again, users and education may be two-thirds complete, and management, process, and resources half allocated. In phase four, the integrated phase, user focus and education is complete, but the management, processes, infrastructure, and resource may not be fully committed or organized for usability. Finally, in the strategic phase, all five phases are fully functional. Usability can be introduced in many ways. Often, an incident occurs that shows the value of usability or points to serious flaws in workflow. Individual infiltration methods include gradual discussion with teams and groups, increasing awareness of how usability affects their work, and what modifications can be made to promote it. Internal champions can be from any level, but they must communicate effectively to upper-level executives who may not prioritize it and are only concerned about how it affects the overall organizational mission. External expert consultants can often be useful to catalyze the change and can be a means of handling it in a politically wise way. This slide shows some of the steps that can be used to promote and expand usability within an organization. Usability has value both to individual users and to the organization as a whole via various mechanisms shown in this slide. Some basic points about eliciting information from stakeholders. Don't just listen to the executives, but also listen to the users. Don't listen to what they say, listen, study, what they do. Don't give them what they ask for, give them what they need. Again, what is usability? Is it the optimal user experience? We find there's a continuum from the most basic usefulness to an experience that has meaningful personal significance. As shown in this diagram, the pyramid starts with the most basic level of something that is functional. In other words, it works as programmed. The next level up is reliable. It is available and accurate. The third layer of the pyramid is usable, in that the thing can be used without difficulty. The fourth layer is convenient. It is a super easy to use, works like I think. The next to the top layer is pleasurable. The device provides a memorable experience worth sharing. The topmost layer of the continuum of usability pyramid is meaningful in that the thing has personal significance. This concludes usability in human factors, electronic health records and usability, lecture B. In this lecture, we reviewed usability concepts and examined various concepts by Dr. Jeffrey Belden that explains models such as simplicity, naturalness, consistency, and minimizing cognitive load. In addition, we discussed stages of usability provided by the HIMSS Usability Task Force. Lastly, we examined usability basic methods.